This short video will take you through the kernel debug example in DS5 and include the DStream hardware setup. As you can see, we'll use a Beagle board for this example. For mine, we need this USB Ethernet hub. If you have an XM, you have an Ethernet port built in. Now once that's in, let's take our Ethernet crossover cable and connect it to our host machine. Next, we'll connect the DStream unit to our probe unit. Using the provided 100-way cable, pop one end in the front of the DStream unit and the other in the big slot of the probe unit, like so. Next, we'll connect the DStream unit to our host machine using USB, first to the back of the machine. Now, the USB drivers were installed with DS5, so if you have that up and running, you're good to go. After the USB is in the host, we'll connect the probe to the target using the JTAG A5 slot on the probe unit, and then the JTAG port on the Beagle board. Now, be careful when connecting the JTAG cable to the Beagle board. Make sure you line up pin 1 correctly. Next, we'll power everything up, starting with the Beagle board. Connect power to the Beagle board like so, then into the power strip, and we'll do the same for the DStream unit. First, power to the back of the unit, and then into the strip. And the DStream unit and our target buzz to life. Now that we're up and running, we'll switch to DS5 Eclipse interface and get started on our kernel debug example. All right, now that we're in DS5 and we're connected to DStream in our Beagle board, let's load the kernel example project and the support files we'll need. Make sure you're in the debug perspective, then go to your Project Explorer view, right-click, then choose to Import. In the Import dialog, select the existing project dialog here, and then Next. All right, let's look for our examples archive by clicking here. I'm already right here where my examples.zip directory is. You'll need to navigate to the examples directory where you install DS5. Now it includes a bunch of projects and feel free to grab all of these, but for the sake of expediency, I'm just going to grab the distribution of the kernel module example projects. Now the distribution contains necessary support files for all of these examples, including kernel module. So we'll wait a little bit for these projects to load in our workspace. Now once that's done, we'll create a debug configuration. The configuration here, the module Beagle example, gives us a lot of the setup for free, but let's go through the options. This is the connection panel. This is where you'll define your hardware and set the type of debug session. Our Beagle board is selected for us in the panel, but if you wanted to set something else, there are a bunch of other targets here to choose from. Project type allows us to choose between bare metal, Linux apps, and kernel debug. We'll leave this at kernel debug. And the debug operation menu is used to tell the debugger if you'll be debugging with or without trace. Now we'll use the browse buttons to find our DStream, and after a second, it finds the unit over USB. Select it, and let's move on. The files panel is where you would define the applications that you want to load before debugging but we'll do this later after we've loaded a kernel module on the target. Use the debugger panel to tell the debugger what to do once the connection of the target has been established. Use these options to trigger your application on startup or define initialization scripts or debugger commands. We're just going to connect the target, which is already defined, so let's just start the debug session. Now let's connect to our Beagle board. I've already set up an SSH connection to my target using the remote systems view. It's simple to do and you can open a command line right here in Eclipse. Now on our target, we're going to switch the right directory and install the modex.co module. Once it's running, we'll switch back to debug control and interrupt the session so we can tell the debugger where to find the code for the image in our workspace. To do this, Open up the path substitution dialog and add a new substitute path. First we define the image, then we define the kernel debug project directory in our workspace. Now that it knows where to find the example code, 
Let's set a breakpoint. Open up modex.c and place a breakpoint right at the beginning of its initialization. We'll trigger it as soon as we restart the module. So let's do that. Restart the debug session, return to the target, remove the module, then install it again. After a second, this will trigger the breakpoint as expected. Now that we've hit a breakpoint, all of the views in the debugger are populated with new information, starting with debug control, which now contains a list of stack entries and threads. Click on a few of the stack entries and see how each of the views update with data pertinent to that entry. Now let's focus on the modex.co entry. Click and head over to the variables view to see the value of all current variables at the breakpoint. Modex has six variables, and the variables view shows us a wealth of information for each of them. Now down here in the memory view, it's empty right now, but we can fix that by utilizing DS5's cool drag and drop feature. Let's take our top variable and drag it into the memory view and see where it was stored in memory and the value stored there. We can even look at the value in a different format if hexadecimal is in our style. Boolean, for instance. And now we see false here. So that's the kernel module debug example from hardware setup to debug session, all in just over six minutes.